Welcome back to Noir Alley, TCM's weekly foray into the world of film noir. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. This week I'm presenting one of the most overlooked movies on the resume of one of the world's most famous directors, Fritz Lang. It's The Blue Gardenia from 1953, a film that tends to polarize viewers. Some devotees of Lang consider it one of his lesser efforts, far from the classic status earned by Scarlet Street or The Big Heat. But others find it surprisingly subversive for its time, the rare studio concoction with a distinctly feminist twist. If you're in the latter camp, much of the credit must go to the writer of The Blue Gardenia, Vera Caspare. She is known mainly as the author of the novel Laura, which in 1944, 20th Century Fox, turned into arguably the most famous mystery movie of all time. Back in the early 1900s, Caspare put herself through business school and then worked her way into a successful career in advertising, all before becoming a novelist, journalist, and playwright. In fact, one of her early plays, Blind Mice, featured an all-female cast, and some of it would be subtly reworked into the Blue Gardenia, specifically the premise of three career girls sharing an apartment and a jaundiced view of men. The Blue Gardenia was made at a significant juncture in the lives of both Vera Caspare and Fritz Lang. Both were tagged as suspicious by the House Committee on Un-American Activities, and both had been gray-listed in Hollywood, their careers essentially hanging in the balance. When Caspare sold a treatment entitled The Gardenia to Warner Brothers, she used the money to escape the heat funding an extended European vacation for her and her husband, film producer I.G. Goldsmith. Coincidentally, the Goldsmiths were Lang's neighbors in Beverly Hills. Now, as for Lang, he was professionally adrift at this time and found an unexpected savior in the form of Columbia boss Harry Cohn, who helped out when the director couldn't find steady work. Cohn placed a few calls to his cronies at Warner Brothers and Lang suddenly was tossed a lifeline, filming the script Charles Hoffman had written from Caspary's treatment. What Lang enjoyed most about the project was the chance to work with Ann Baxter, whom he'd wanted to cast in his 1941 film Manhunt when she was only 17. Lang was notorious for browbeating his leading ladies, but that wasn't the case with Baxter. He loved working with her and felt she gave a terrific performance as Nora Larkin, a lonely woman suspected of killing the lecher who tries to date rape her. Now, it says something about America in the 1950s that this plot was not shocking at the time. Modern sensibilities might wonder how such a disturbing story could slip past the Puritans in the production code office. But the truth is, no one objected. The heavy in the story, libidinous pinup artist Harry Preble, is played, of course, by Raymond Burr, the foremost villain in noir. The Harry Preble in Caspary's draft is nothing like Raymond Burr. She even describes him as delicate. But in 1953, if your project required an instantly ominous sociopath, you got Raymond Burr's agent on the phone. In fact, if you've seen the movie Pitfall, you'll swear that Harry Preble is the slightly slimmer twin of the psycho stalker he played in that 1948 film. Now, the object of Burr's unwanted attention are the fantastic gal gang of Ann Baxter, Ann Southern, and Jeff Donnell. Now, this supporting role had to be something of a come down for Southern, who'd been one of the most popular screen comedians of the 1940s starring in 10 features as Maisie, a spunky burlesque dancer. She's a little older here, but no less sassy. Okay, if there's one segment of our audience I know is going to love this film, it's aficionados of tiki culture, because the blue gardenia of the title is actually a tiki lounge, where Ann Baxter has her fateful first date. And guess who provides the evening's musical entertainment? None other than Nat King Cole. So hurry up and make yourself a couple of Polynesian pearl divers and settle in for Fritz Lang's unsettling 1953 thriller, The Blue Gardenia.